Crew AI just came out with a recent update that is going to upgrade how your MCP servers interact with your agents. So I'm going to show you how to do that with Docker. And then we're also use several different agents to write code for us using several different MCP servers. And we'll start with step one, and that's upgrading or installing Crew AI on your project. So open up Cursor or whatever ID that you're using. And I am going to go ahead and type in pip install upgrade. So dash capital U Crew AI, Crew AI dash tools. I already had this, so it only took a second. Might take a little bit longer for you. No worries, it could take up to a couple of minutes. Now, once that is done, a community type is just clear to clear out your terminal. Now I want to create a new folder. So up here at the top left in VS, well, I'm using cursor or VS code, you can say new folder. And I'm just gonna name this underscore crew AI MCP updates. Now I wanna go into that directory. So in order to go into that, you can say CD CD in your terminal and then underscore crew AI and then MCP updates. Okay, so now I am in the correct project. Now we need to create our crew that's going to have these agents to perform or create this code for us. Which means for step two to create our crew, we just need to type in crew AI create crew and then you can name this crew whatever you want. I am going to specifically specifically have it create a fast API server and try to have it in a correct architecture with organized code and all that. So I will just say fast API underscore crew. This is going to come up and ask you some questions. You can edit this later. I'll just say open AI and I'll come back in and give it my API key later. Okay, that was pretty simple. We created our crew. Now we can move on to the next step. And that step is to install Docker. Like I said, you can have MCP servers running locally on your computer or because I'm going to be writing code and it may run some tests for me, I want it to be executed within a Docker environment. So in order to have Docker, you need to, you can install Docker desktop, it's probably the easiest way. So if I have a Mac, so I am going to have the link for install Docker desktop on Mac, but also on the left-hand side here, here's Windows and Linux. You just have, you just download the version that is for you. And since I am running it on a Mac, I have the icon for it up here. This is like the whale with the containers, the shipping containers on top, you know, for Docker. And that means that it's currently running on your computer. And that's all you need to know right now. Now, I had a video before where I showed you when they first released integrating MCP servers into an AI agent. I kind of had to do some digging on how to have multiple servers into a single agent, you know, instead of having it spread across uh, lots of agents. Because at the end of the day, MCP servers are MCP servers are just Python functions which act as tools for agents to do something or interact outside of the knowledge that they currently just have based on the LLM that you're using. So what I what they are doing now is making it even easier for you to use them so you don't have to understand as much. But they've even upgraded it better now so that you can use it with inside your crew AI base, which means that if you have a crew, then you can now have them easily integrated into your agents inside of your crew as well. So here in their documentation, they have several ways to have uh, standard, you know, uh, input, input, output service, so like locally, they have it over SSE or streamable or, or a streamable HTTP server. What I showed you before is you can have this MCP server adapter, you give it the server param, which would be, you know, one of these. And then basically, that means now you have all the tools available, and you, you would uh, alias this as MCP underscore tools, and you would pass in the MCP tools into the agent as tools. So tools equals MCP tools. Now, whatever server that was, it has now this agent has all the tools available from that server. But now they've also made it so that you can access specific tools. But now in the documentation, at least you can now there's they have made it easier for you to access specific tools. If you know the tools, which you would know the tools ahead of time available for that server, or at least you should, you should never just use a server if you don't know the tools or what's actually happening. And that it should at least be like some trusted source. So here you can, if an agent, even though it might have available 10, 10 different tools for you to use, you may only need a couple of them, not all of them. And that's just gonna make it easier for your agent to understand what exactly it needs to do. Now they've have a they've up, updated it. So now you're using it with crew AI base, which I believe you maybe could have done before, but now it's at least official. And I don't think they had what I'm about to show you. Now, whenever you create your crew, the class has this at crew base, which is a decorator for the class, and that allows your crew that allows things to be done behind the scenes that we don't have to worry about so that we don't have to write as much code. And then in here, now all we need to do is you see there is this self.getMCPTools. So let me let me scroll over. Now I have this MCP server params. Now I can have an array of multiple tools. So this is, or I'm sorry, a list 
uh, a list of multiple tools. So in here I have different MCP servers potentially, which we will have three. And then I can just simply say, if I want all the tools from all of the servers, I can say self.getMCP tools in my agent, like so tools equals self.getMCP tools. And now that has all the tools. I don't have to specify the exact parameters or separately, right? I can now, it can just have all the MCP tools here. So just to make it a little bit clear, you would say self.MCP tools, and you can also specify the exact tools that you need for that agent. And now for the next step, what we're gonna be doing is integrating all th or three different MCP servers. The first one is called Context7 MCP. MCP. What this basically does is it pulls up-to-date version specific documentation and code examples straight from the source and places them directly in your prompt. And all you have to do is say, use Context7 in your prompt. Okay, so they give an example here where if you want to check for Next.js middleware, or create a Next.js middleware that checks for valid JWT and cookies and authenticated users, that at the end they just say use context seven. Okay, so what this does is this give you a bunch of ways to install it. We are going to be using it with our AI agent. So I'm going to show you how to do that exactly. So here it says the available tools. It tries to resolve a library library ID, which is just a name uh, for the library to search for. So like maybe like fast API, for instance, or SQLite, Postgres, something like that. But then the second tool is get library docs, which is then going to um, like, for instance, here, mongodb slash docs slash Vercel slash next.js. This is going to, this is going to get documentation and some examples so that anything up to date, so it can actually go to the documentation for all the up to date information for next.js so that your code, your LLM has an updated way by giving it context on how to create that. So like I mentioned, we are going to be building this with Docker. So out of all of these, there is one called using Docker. We don't need to know all of this, but we do need to first create a Docker file. So we're going to create a Docker file that is a capital D. Don't, don't forget that. So we're going to expand this. I'm just basically just going to copy all of this in, uh, into my project, kind of right click, say new file, say Docker file. Then I'm just going to paste all this in here. Then we're going to come back and it says, then we need to actually build this. So remember this white dot up here means you haven't saved it yet. So save it, command J to open up the terminal. And then we're going to paste this in here and build Docker. Now I already have it built, so it shouldn't take long and it should, it's already there. Okay. So this means now we have a server for context seven inside of our Docker to use. And then we, this is how you would like set up for I, an IDE. For instance, this is for Klein. This is how you would, this is exactly what you would copy and paste into the JSON file for Klein in order to make this work. But we don't need all of this to make that work. I'll show you exactly what we need. And then right here, basically I'm going to say what, this is how Kube I had it. So the MCP server commands, I have this, uh, standard input output server parameters, the command Docker, and then these arguments run dash I dash dash RM, then context seven dash MCP MCP. So if we come back to the documentation, here's only two things you need, the command and the arguments. That's all you need. And I combine this with the crew AI command in order to make this happen. So with crew AI base, I basically copied this, well, well I copied this whole thing, but I only needed this so far, the first server. And then I just put that in right here. Now, of course, I don't have this imported. So let's go ahead and import that right there. It does not like how this is spaced. There we go. There we go. It didn't like how that was spaced. I don't think I did either. Okay, there we go. So now we're good with that. But again, this is only one server. I said three. So what are the other two? Well, let's go ahead and put them in here now. I'll have, you'll have all this code, so you don't have to worry about it. But I also want to, I want to have like data that I can, that can persist and then I can manipulate and do things with. So I need to have a database and an easy one to use is SQLite. So in here, this is the command to run SQLite within Docker. Okay. And I'm just naming my database test.db. Then I have one that is a little bit more complicated. Now for the last one, this one's a little bit more complicated, but this is the setup with Docker is a little more complicated, but uh, this is the file system. So I wanted to, in order to actually write the data within Docker, right? It needs to have access to the directory in order to do that. So with the file system, it can uh, write directories. So it can create folders, 
create the files inside there, edit them, you know, do all kinds of things to actually create what I want as a fast API server. So this is called the file system MCP server. I have a link for this, but if we just scroll down, it's gonna, I mean, it has, uh, I think like 11 or 12 different tools in here, but when we scroll down, here's basically what we need for Docker. Well, of course we don't need all of this, but what we need to know is that here, this is what gives the mount. It gives this access to the source. This is the path that I want it to do things with to basically write files to from my local, like from my local machine. And then the destination is where it's going to mount to on Docker. Like, so now it's going to have this connection between my local computer and Docker because Docker is a separate system. It doesn't have access to my local, to my local system. So it needs to have that. And so we can mount or they, you know, bind our local directories to Docker. So then they can manipulate, um, that specific folder, but only that folder. Right. And that is exactly what I'm doing here. So what you would basically update is you could just update this file path that this project is located on your folder. And so you can do that by right-clicking your actual project and then just copying the path and then pasting it here. Okay, for the next step, this is, I've already done this for you, but uh, we are going to create all the agents and then set up the configuration files for those agents so they know what to do. So I want three different agents. I want the fast API agent because I do want to specifically um, create a fast API uh, backend for me or an example one, I have a code writer and then a code reviewer. Okay, the, and the reviewer can kind of edit those things. So if you notice here, tools, I say self.getMCP tools, which means it's gonna have access to all of these tools. And that's not really necessary, but this that's just how you get to know what all the tools it needs are. And basically it's the same for all of these. Right. So then I have the code writer and code review. So they have then this also means down here. Oops, I can get rid of that. I also have the task associated for each of those agents. You'll also have this. I don't have the best prompts. I'm not trying to just get the best prompts here. I don't think I need to say all that. Um, but this is basically I have the fast API developer. That's its role. I have a goal and I kind of have a backstory for what I would like it to do. And essentially I want to use the database. I want to have all the proper layering um, and architecture for my fast API. And then I have the code writer and then I have the code reviewer for that. Okay. And then for the task, you know, it's relatively, I kind of kept them very similar to the same thing. Um, but then basically for the review, it should, I wanted to have like structured output for different things on what work, what it, it did well, um, what potentially could be updated in the future and so forth. Now, if you're wondering, I don't have a requirements.txt for Docker because I'm, I'm running the crew outside of Docker but it's going to be used, but the MCP, MCP servers are on a, or within the Docker container on these images. And so then it's going to run, it's going to do everything on Docker, but it's going to create the file and folder structure here on my local desktop. So if anything were to be wrong with the MCP servers, that's going to happen over there in Docker. All right. And we're about the last step. There's two more things you need to do. First off, uh, it's just, you, you can just say from dot crew import fast API crew. And we need to have, you know, I'm gonna have this run function. I kind of have it define exactly what I want to do with inside the crew. You can, you can definitely bring that out here. So it's an input and you can, we, we can make this a little bit more, uh, a little bit more robust, but for this example, just to kind of show you how MCP servers work, I'm just going to, if name equals main, and then we're just going to have this run or else you won't, it won't do anything if you're not actually executing the run function. Okay. So now with that, I'm gonna bring up the terminal and you want to, you want to come into your fast API crew. So this is what the project structure should look right. You basically have your crew that you created through the terminal and your Docker file. And then that's all in the project. So right now I just went, I changed my directory into the fast API crew. I'm going to run this Python dash M source dot fast API crew dot main. So if I press enter, this should now start and kick off the crew, but you can see up here, let's, let's just kind of go through this. This is going to take a minute to run, but add the context seven documentation and the MCP file system server running on standard input output. These are the allowed directories that it can, you know, it can actually have access to. So now what's happening is the fast API developer and the task it's, it's trying to, so right now it's getting the structure for how it wants to create it. So I have the app main Python file, the models, route services, the database and the schemas, and then the configuration the, with the dot env requirements. So these, this is how the project should be set up for my fast API server. 
and then it's kind of creating all the content. So it looks like it's going to go ahead and create all the contents for all of this. And then what would this, this what, what we need to do then is have the file system cr actually create each of those directories and then actually create those files. So for instance, here was the tool. It needs to create the slash app. It did, and it is doing it right here. I have to, I have to be honest with you. I gave it the wrong directory. So it has access to a different directory than the one I actually created the project on. But over here on the left-hand side, it's create here's the app database, the models, the routes, uh, here's the schemas, the services, configuration, Python file, the main Python file. Um, yeah, so we can just, we just, it's just, it's just kind of amazing that's doing all of this, right? So here's the code writer It's using the right tool. It's kind of writing that content into an item underscore service dot py. So if I come into services and there's an item service, you know, here's the imports, here's how to create an item. It looks like it does not have the updated, uh, yeah, that is deprecated. Okay, so the code reviewer had an error, and that's okay. This uh, this really is just because it was within uh, within Docker, but I didn't give it access. It tried to access app slash app slash main .py. that didn't exist. It didn't have the proper prefix for the actual project that we were in. That's okay. Uh, if we just need to update it so the code reviewer knows the exact project path that it has access two that that's okay we didn't i don't think i correctly gave that in or passed that in but we wrote everything now the senior code reviewer didn't necessarily get to make sure that it was done properly all right so it wasn't perfect that's okay i did have to make a couple changes probably because the code reviewer didn't work like i wanted to but you will have the fully functional working code now what uh, i need to do is just run it so i ran it so once you do if you just come here open this then this is the main greeting, okay? But this always has a Swagger UI. So this is basically how we can run uh, and test everything that it created on the server. So you type in slash docs. This is just happened. This is what you get with fast API. So now we can, we have items and we can create a user. So let's go ahead and just go ahead and create, this is an item. So let's just call this item one. If I execute this, hopefully this works. Typically, if you get a correct response body, it did. Now, if we go to items, we can just say, let's just get all the items. So we we only had one, it was here. It retrieved the name item one. Okay, great. Same thing for the users. We want to create a user. Let's see, maybe we call it Tyler and then AI. Okay, so now we have two. Now, if we use the get, which is all the users, we just want to execute this and we can retrieve it. Now we have two, we have Tyler and AI. Okay, that's great. And then obviously this is just the route. This is the main app, the main route is welcome to the fast API application. Okay, great. So what basically what this showed us is that we can have, we can create AI agents that given proper context and proper, um, you know, proper prompting that they can actually code for us projects that we that we would like to have, right? This specifically I want to do for fast API. And I just wanted to do some basic operations for um, like CRUD applications, even though it didn't really do update and delete like I asked, but it was able to uh, create the full application. And even though it has some mistakes, that's probably with some prompting, you can have multiple agents go in there, and you can keep cycling through it, have it keep reviewing it. And you know, then we can we can make it craft better, uh, craft better code for us. But the whole goal was that we can now easily add MCP servers into our crew, and you can also give it specific, you know, tools from those MCP servers much more easily with Crew AI. Thank you for watching. I have my school community in the description below. I am I am creating an AI agency. So essentially, I've already started creating AI agents and for companies and for businesses. So that means that I'm hosting it, I'm creating it, we basically have an onboarding and I you know, get to understand what you want and then we come up with a plan and then I do that for you. And then the goal is to subtract from your business, not add to it, okay? So you can certainly do it if you want. I can help you create them if you want, which I also have a coaching plan, which I am actually doing right now with, uh, with some people, is I'm helping them create their AI services so that they can then you know, make money and not just really just, it's not really just about making money, right? It's about saving time and being able to uh, be active with more leads, be able to create more sales so you can generate more revenue, but you need to be able to take time away from other things in order to be able to give more time to that. 
So join my school community and we can help. So join my school community and we come up with a plan for you. Thank you for watching. Here's some more videos. I have a fire crawl course coming up very soon. I would highly suggest doing that for web scraping and I will see you next video.